from the footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our Super Bowl 48 preview between the Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Broncos. The Denver Broncos are a pass-first football team, and the biggest matchup they're going to have to win is with their passing game versus the Seattle Seahawks secondary. And one way they can have some success is by flooding the zone when the Seahawks go cover three. I'm going to show you how they can get this done. We're going to spread the field, try to put free safety Earl Thomas in the bind. We want to keep our two biggest playmakers off the line of scrimmage. Demarius Thomas right here, and also Wes Welker in the slot. And what we're going to do, we're going to give these guys these free releases because they're off the line of scrimmage. We're going to also put Earl Thomas in a situation where he's going to have to make a choice. So what we're going to do with Demarius Thomas, we're sitting him on a post. With his speed and his athleticism, that could be a situation where Earl Thomas could jump that route. And on the backside with Eric Decker, we're running a sluggo, which is a slant and go. That could also put Earl Thomas in a situation where he's going to have to make a choice. Now, what we're doing with Julius Thomas, the tight end, sending him on a corner route, and we're bringing Wes Welker in motion across the formation, bringing him outside leg of Demarius Thomas at the snap of the ball. He's coming in as if he's going on the crosser, pivot back out, and he's running the flat route. So now you have a two-on-one situation with the corner here, and we're swinging the back out weak side. So now you have a weak side defender pulling this guy this defender here, which could be a backer, putting him out of the way to create a lane, a space to throw the football for Eric Decker on the sluggo. So that's one way they can flood the zone, create an opportunity on the backside, and keep free safety Earl Thomas busy or get him out of the middle of the field. And if they can do that, they can have a lot of success throwing the football this game versus Seattle. Obviously, mission number one for the Seahawks is to get Peyton Manning off the field with that passing game. And we know they play a lot of cover three, so I'm going to show you how they can play cover three with an under front and still be in great position in their underneath coverage to get these guys off the field. Let me show you one way they can get this done. We know the Broncos love to go trips with the single receiver to the, to the opposite side. And what they love to do is simple route combinations. They love to send a guy deep down the middle. They also love to send a guy that's in the middle that trips on a flag route. And they also love to run the short in route right here to Wes Walker. And on the back side, they love to run the quick slant and they also swing the back out of the backfield. So that's the route combination they love to run when they go trips. Now, how they can be in better position, you see one, two, three, four, five guys, six in this second level of defense with Earl Thomas deep. Earl Thomas gets his drop and he's going to wait for the deepest threat, which is the free safety, which is what a free safety is supposed to do. And he's taking out this streak that's going down the middle of the field. So what you're going to have your backer and your nickel guy buzz to the next threat. So as this guy sees this in route coming in, he's buzzing, but he also sees the back out in the flat. So he's going to bypass his in route, and his job is to shoot down and take out the running back that's going out in the flat. Meanwhile, he's passing the in route over the backer who's also buzzing, so he's going to meet this short in route. Now you have the cornerback that's going to get his depth. He's passing off. He sees the guy stop his route, pass off. Now he's running with the flag routes, playing great technique, inside technique to where he can wall him off and play the ball. Now you're going to have the backer drop back in the middle. Strong safety is going to make sure he takes this slant while you have the cornerback drifting over top. So you have two guys covering this slant, taking that away, and also you're playing great coverage on the strong side, the strength of the formation. And I think if they can do this in an under front, you see where the nose tackle is aligned, they can still get creative and be aggressive in their cover three defense. And if they can get these guys off the field, it puts them in great position to win the ball game. The Denver Broncos have to be able to get Russell Wilson off the spot in this ball game. And one way they can do so is by sending pressure off the edge with speed. I'm a big fan of sending a corner off the edge to flush Russell Wilson to his left. So that way they can make a play, keep him bottled up and get off the field on third down. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. We're going to offset uh, put the defensive end off the line of scrimmage just a little bit. We're going to run a twist with these two guys here. We're going to send the extra backer. We're going to flush Russell Wilson to his left so that way he can, the defense can make a play. You can hopefully get him off the field because he's a right-handed quarterback throwing left. That's a problem for anybody that's right-handed. You get him to throw to their off hand. So what we're going to do here, we're going to send the corner. As the cadence starts to wind down, we're going to walk down this corner. Boom, and he's coming off the edge. And as he's walking down, we're going to walk the strong safety over because now he's manned up on this wide receiver here. We're also manned up on this wide receiver here. Now, weak side or the side that we're sending the blitz or the side we're flushing Russell Wilson to, we're, we're going to have the end take an outside arc to 
get contained because we're sitting inside the weak side backer inside where he was supposed to be getting that extra pressure with the backer but also playing outside contained with the defensive end now what we're going to do here like i said before we're going to run a twist with the end and the tackle the tackle goes first the end shoots down that a gap we're going to have the backer and the strong side backer get a bump drop in the coverage drop in the coverage band join this tight end so if this guy runs whatever route he's playing we're playing him inside out with the middle backer and also the strong side backer we're going to have this defensive tackle get a good push on this guard but he's also spying the near back if they line up in two backs we know they don't do that so if this back goes here it's his job to get outside and take the back so you're really replacing his rush responsibility with this weak side backer your combo covering the tight end you're sending the corner off the edge trying to flush russell wilson outside because this is a speed guy and he's going to have to get out the pocket quickly and that way he's going to run into the waiting arms of a defensive end hopefully where the broncos can make the tackle and now we're going to have the free safety drop back in the middle of the field so we're playing cover one tight man on the outside trying to get pressure with the corner to flush him outside to his left and i think that's how the broncos can one utilize this in third medium to get the seahawks off the field and put the ball back into the hands of Peyton Manning. We know the Seattle Seahawks can run the football, but in order to have success versus the Denver Broncos, they're gonna have to make plays consistently in the passing game. And one play I like to utilize a lot is the Y square route, where you're gonna have two receivers, the Y and the Z, running square ends. And that's gonna put the safety in a two-on-one situation and also put a, the cornerback to that side in the bind. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put the cornerback in the bind and also put the safety in a two-on-one go. We have the Y receiver right here, which could be a tight end. We also have the Z. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run, we're gonna stem him up over and in. He's running the short square route. We're gonna have the Z behind him, running 16 yards up the field and coming in. Now what has to happen, you're gonna see the strong safety either close in on the square route because we also have, on the backside, we have a pivot route over here that's gonna pull this backer. We're also gonna run a post. So that's gonna take care of the corner and hopefully take care of the free safety. So now you have the backers occupied the strong safety will try to get aggressive and try to squeeze down on this this in route right here by the Y. And we're swinging the back out to the Y and Z side, to the twin side. Why? Because what's going to happen, this cornerback now will have to make a choice. Either this back is going to buzz underneath, allow the strong safety to jump on this square route, or we're going to have the deep square route being covered one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback. And we know Russell Wilson is an accurate passer. He can hit this play any day of the week. I think that's how they can have some success. Putting these three guys in a triangle in a bad situation. You have three on three. So you can put together a man type of situation. You can put together, if they're going to play zone, you have three on two now. I think that's how Seattle can put Denver in a bind and make things easier for Russell Wilson in that passing game. Because again, like I said before, they can run the football, but they're going to have to hit those plays in the passing game consistently in order to stay ahead of the chains and stay on the field and keep Peyton Manning off of it. Now here are some in-game adjustments you want to watch for in this ball game for the Broncos. Whether or not they utilize multiple fronts to try to stop this Seahawks ground game. Whether or not they go with that 4-3 over, maybe an under front, maybe show some 3-4 looks to try to get in better position to close down the gaps and keep everything bottled in tackle to tackle. And you also want to keep an eye on whether or not they're going to play with a single high safety or how often they go with the single high safety. If they're able to have success on the outside versus those Seahawks wide receivers, it could allow them the luxury of putting an extra guy in the box to help stop the run or also to take away the short to intermediate passing game. And on offense, you want to see how well they move those Seahawks safeties out of the middle of the field with their formations. We know the Broncos love to go three wide, sometimes four wide. You may even see some empty sets. Try to get those safeties out of the middle of the field, and that way they can take advantage with their deep passing game. Now for the Seahawks in this ball game, defensively, I'll look for more zone blitzing versus that no huddle, hurry up offense of the Broncos. I think that's one way they can neutralize what they want to do offensively and get these guys off the field. And on offense, they have to find ways to trap the defensive end in the running game. Two reasons why this is effective. Number one, it allows you to get to the outside quicker. And two, it allows your offensive lineman to get to the second level a lot easier as opposed to just trying to beat guys and then climb to the second level, trapping that defensive end, gets that tackle to that second level a lot faster. And that way they can pop off long runs and i would also look to utilizing two punt returners deep two reasons why this is effective number one you don't have to really worry about the broncos faking a punt so you can always sacrifice that extra guy back there as a returner and if he doesn't get the football he's always that pseudo lead blocker to take away the first threat which could be the gunner or the long snapper that could help spring a big return 
Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For the Broncos, playing the quick game offensively could be beneficial. That's both the quick passing game with your scissors concepts, your whip and pivot routes, backs in the flats, as well as your quick running game such as your traps, your gap plays, your inside zones to try to take advantage of an over-aggressive defense in front of Seattle. And they have to win on the inside defensively. Interior pressure disrupts the blocking assignments of power running teams, so it's important that both defensive tackles are able to win consistently up front. And you want Russell Wilson to get rid of the football quickly, whether that's by blitzing or combo covering on the outside with the cornerback playing off. Try to influence a quick throw to where the linebacker can jump underneath and make a play. The one thing Denver can't allow is Russell Wilson the opportunity to extend plays with his legs. And for the Seahawks in this ballgame, stacking and bunching the wide receivers could be successful. This is one way that they can calm the pressure of the Denver Broncos while trying to generate big plays in the passing game with those natural rub routes and pick routes. And it also gives them better blocking angles in the running game. And the Seahawks have to get physical and then pass guys off. The one thing Seattle does well is press on the outside. And this week, they must avoid chasing guys across the field, get a good jam, allow the backers to get into their drops, and pass them off to the next man. And on the corners, you want to keep inside position against these Broncos wide receivers and force Peyton Manning to drop the football in the tiniest of windows consistently by walling off those wide receivers and using the sideline as your extra defender. Now here are three key positional battles you want to look out for in this ball game. First, the Broncos receiving core versus the Seahawks secondary. This is strength versus strength. The Broncos possess one of the best receiving cores in the game with Eric Decker, Demarius Thomas, Wes Welker, and tight end Julius Thomas, while the Hawks secondary is the league's best across the board led by Richard Sherman. And what makes them dangerous is that their safeties can match up in the slot and cover. So the winner of this battle gives their team a leg up in trying to win the game. The second battle is in the trenches between the Broncos offensive line versus the defensive front of Seattle. And mission number one in any Broncos game is keeping Peyton Manning clean in a pocket. And the Seahawks are a team that is able to apply pressure without blitzing. So in this ball game, I don't care who you are or who you have in the secondary. If you can't get to or at least make Manning uncomfortable in the pocket, your defense as a whole will struggle. And finally, the last positional battle is between the Broncos linebackers and Russell Wilson. Wilson is a guy that does an excellent job in keeping the defense off balance with his legs, both off a of read option and also regular drop back passing plays. If Trevathan and company are not able to keep him contained, then not only will their pass defense suffer, but their over aggressiveness to try to stop him could lead to a big day on the ground for Marshawn Lynch. The X factor in this ball game for the Broncos will be their defensive line pressure. Like I said before, interior pressure can slow down a running game, and if they're able to get pressure on the outside and keeping Russell Wilson contained, they could really derail what the Seahawks want to do offensively. And the X factor for the Seahawks will be their tight ends as both Zach Miller and Luke Wilson. In my opinion, they have to excel on both ends of offense as run blocking as well as being viable options over the middle of the field. They're able to own the middle and they bring their A game is going to open things up on the outside for those wide receivers and make this offense that much tougher to defend. Now let's take a look at the personnel breakdown to see where each team's strengths are. And right off the bat, both teams have excellent play at the quarterback position, which is why they find themselves playing in Super Bowl 48. The running backs favor the Seahawks with Marshawn Lynch and Robert Turbin providing an excellent one-two punch over the steady Noshaw Marino and rookie Monty Ball, who in my opinion, both guys are being underutilized in this offense. The receiving core and the offensive line heavily favors the Broncos with the ability to attack you at every level of the field while also keeping their quarterback free from pressure. The Seahawks are strong at every level of their defense with not only talent, but also versatility. And the Broncos get the nod in the special teams department with Matt Prater and the speedster kickoff returner, Trenton holiday the only time these two teams met in the postseason was in the 1983 wildcard playoffs where the seahawks defense forced three bronco turnovers including two interceptions one from steve deberg and one from rookie quarterback john elway the hawks were able to capitalize offensively with quarterback dave craig going 12 or 13 for 200 yards and three touchdowns en route to a 31 to 7 seahawk victory Rich Tombstone Jackson was one of the most feared pass rushers and defenders of his era. He finished his Broncos career with 43 sacks. He was a three-time Pro Bowler, three-time First Team All-Pro, and also a two-time AFL All-Star. And in my honest opinion, he should already be enshrined in Canton, one of the best football players and defenders in NFL history. When you think about great Seahawk running backs, you always think about Kurt Warner, Sean Alexander, even John L. Williams, the fullback. But people always forget how excellent Chris Warren was during his eight years in Seattle. At 6'2", 228 pounds, Warren was a big back 
with sprinter speed and was a three-time Pro Bowler while rushing for over 6,700 yards and 44 touchdowns in his Hawks career and is still the franchise's second all-time leading rusher. I like the Seahawks in this ball game. You have the number one offense going against the number one defense, and you always have to side with the defensive side of football. This is a football team that can match up well in the secondary versus that Broncos receiving core. And on offense, they can run the football, chewing up the T.O.P., keeping Peyton Manning off the field, and have a young, dynamic quarterback in Russell Wilson that doesn't turn the ball over. That's going to be key. And also, his mobility will be the biggest X factor. When you have a mobile quarterback, it makes the game 11 on 11. And it's tough to match up against defensively. So I think all of those factors, including the fact that they can also get pressure without blitzing, gives the edge to the Seahawks over the Broncos, and which is still be a very entertaining and exciting Super Bowl matchup. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Seahawks fan forums and Bronco fan forums for always showing football game plan support.